Hi everybody. I just thought I'd go live. I just finished the show with um, Cindy Kayser tonight at uh, Liberty Township. And uh, I get a little bit of time off now for the next, well, for a week. Oh my gosh, for a little bit of a, a little bit of a time before I go off to Australia. And um, something I wanted to talk about because there's a significant date right now um, for me personally. And uh, I just kind of wanted to talk about it and just kind of give a, some people some ideas on how to move through grief. Hi, Carol. How is everybody? It's nice to see everybody. I'm just going to wait for everyone to come in. Hey, Richard. Um, hey, Donna. It's nice to see everybody coming in. Hi, Susan. Hello, Mary. Yeah, it's 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 um. So yeah, it's it's kind of interesting. Um, hi, Ginger. It's nice, you know. It's nice to actually be able to have, I guess, a little bit of a um, a platform to talk about this sort of stuff. Um, hi, Angela. Hi, Monica. Hello, everybody who I've not sort of um, who I've missed. Hi, Kim. Um, hello, Mark. Um, it was good. My gallery was good last night, and I had a great night tonight as well. Hi from Oregon. Hi from, hi from Liberty Township. Um, I'm sitting here. It's, uh, it's. I love, love Liv Liberty Township. Oh my God, Simon, you're up by the pool in Bali. How wonderful. Thank you, Marsha. Um, <clears throat> so, hi Janet. Hi Deb. Um, it's. You know, so anyway, hello to everybody who's coming in. Hey, Julie. Um, hello, everyone. Oh, my gosh. It's nice. You know, I look this good because I've just come off stage. That's the reason. <laughs> um, it was funny. Oh, in fact, you would not you would not say that after you saw the, the picture that my boyfriend just took of me. Because I was just FaceTiming him and he took this most awful awful picture it was it was so horrible you wouldn't say i look nice it was i looked like something from the it movie it was really weird <laughs> oh dear anyway um i kind of wanted to talk to you tonight um about grief and about how we move through grief and it's funny because today marks a um <laughs> Oh my God, Mark, you're so funny. Um, yeah, to mark, today, today marks kind of an interesting time in my life, two years ago, and um, where I was dating a guy, and you know, it was one of those moments that I I dated this guy, and you know, I was kind of leaving Montreal. I was so excited. He's like, "Why don't you come to the apartment? It'd be great to see you." La la la. Hi, Brian. And I turned up at the apartment for him to dump me. And, uh, you know, I was devastated. You know, I'd spent the whole um, whole summer with his children and, and everything else. And it was, you know, it was one of those things where I'd really put my heart and soul into this situation. And as, as devastating as it was, grief can come in many ways. It can come as a you know a death of a family member it can be a death of a friend it can be a death of an animal it can be any anything it could be the fact that you've lost your job it could be the fact that you lost your boyfriend and everything else so what was interesting and i like to tell you the story because it's it leads me into into this moment and i i'm telling you it was and I didn't realize he'd actually been, uh, he'd met somebody else. Um, and then I later found out via Facebook and everything else. So it was, it was, it was a horrible, horrible situation. And um, I think, I think it was, um, it was just really, really awful. Anyway, and it does rock your world. Certainly when you're in a situation and, and anyone who's going through relationship breakups, because a lot of people are, or a lot of, different situations you know it's very hard and it's it's very hard and what ended up happening was um, and grief definitely makes you look at your life ginger you're completely right and what ended up happening is I really hit this dark space I hit you know a very very dark space and that dark space overwhelmed me and this is what happens when we hit grief we we get overwhelmed by 
such a dark energy we can't move we're stuck we're in this cycle we can't we can't get out of it you know i i it was horrible i remember being in bed and and crying and everything else and it was just it was just awful and in this space of like pain in the space of pain for some reason i found happiness um, and i tell you this story for a reason because um you know I randomly got this phone call out of the blue at seven o'clock in the morning and it was this guy and not the guy that dumped me but it was someone who he knew and that they they kind of knew each other they weren't friends but he called me up and FaceTimed me right in the moment where I've got snot down my face, I haven't taken my makeup off, I've got my makeup smeared down my face and oh my god, I'm like, I'm like, and I am just horrible. And, and he went, wow, you're an ugly crier, aren't you? And I'm like, thanks. Anyway, it was funny because he told me how I was an ugly crier and that it was just, you know, <laughs> it looked horrible and I was like, oh my God, really? So the funny thing was, is, you know, still in this space where I've still got snot coming down and, and whatever, I was like, you. And we started to talk and I was, he was, he was a friend of mine anyway. And in that space of that ugly crying, it was interesting because through that relationship I found the best thing that ever happened to me and I was in the darkest darks and I couldn't I couldn't get through it you know at that moment when you're in that dark 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 place you don't know how to get through it you're in that deepest darks and, and you're like how do I get through this and that person who FaceTimed me who told me I was the ugliest crier that he's ever seen is my current boyfriend who I live with. We have two children and three dogs and we're as happy as pigs and shit. I'm just gonna say that and yes, I did say that word. But what it goes to show, and I've been thinking about this, is because right in that place, you can't see anything else. Whether it's a loss of a loved one, whether it is, um, whether it's a loss of a loved one, whether it is a loss of a job, whether it's, whatever it is, no matter what it is, you go through it. And at that time, you can't see beyond it. You are just in that, you're like, ah. Oh. And you don't want to see it. You don't want to see that happiness can be reached. You don't want to see that you can get through this. You, you don't want to be able to get into that place because you want to stay in that space of being just raw and when something like that happens it cracks you to that place of so vulnerable so so much vulnerability that you are just cracked open and you you actually don't want to face it you don't want to face it and you are as raw as raw you as you can get and I'll tell you in those in those moments that's when I do my best readings okay this is where I get so deep and I get so into that place of you know, I come from a raw emotional state and when I do my readings, I have to, you know, I have to come from that raw emotional space. So what I do is I, I end up singing a song and I, I think about something sad and I become very much uh, broken up. And that's the only reason why I do that. And it was, it was quite amazing actually. Um, it, it's quite amazing how how you get into this place of just <sighs> openness and in that place of openness you have to understand that you, you we have our own pity party listen I'm gonna tell you right now there is no harm in having a pity party no harm but you have to just get through it and the biggest piece of advice came from my dad it was really interesting. My dad said to me when I, when my first love, you know, I was 17 and I broke up with a guy called Chris, who ironically I'm now with a guy called Chris. Um, he said to me, he said, Lisa, it's just another brick in the wall. 
It's just another brick in the wall that's going to make you stronger throughout your life. And which was interesting because now I use that analogy with my son and I use it with my daughter and I use it in every, every way because it is just another way. It's another lesson. It teaches us something else. And what this lesson did with this breakup of this guy is it taught me to be honest with myself. It taught me to love myself and to actually see who I am. To see that I actually put my life on hold. To see that I put somebody else before me. I put someone else before me. And listen, I'm going to tell you, you should never, ever, ever put anyone else before you. What you should do is you should love yourself. And even if you're a parent, and I'm going to tell you now, even as a parent, you have to realize that you're trying to hold everything together for you. And when you are okay, they're going to be okay. And I can't tell you here, it is just so amazing when you can just be confident and stand up and go, hey, you know what? This is beautiful. And the interesting thing is in that darkest space, that darkest, darkest place where we've all been, and some of you may be there right now. I had to take it moment by moment. It was not something that I could go day by day. It was moment by moment. And I think for me, doing the work that I do, the hardest thing for me to deal with is the fact that when I lose someone that I care about and I love, that that person is still here. So that person is still here. And ironically, that person now still calls me up. We spoke yesterday, not physically, we, we text, but we still friendly on that friendly basis. I mean, Chris often says he's gonna come to the wedding, which is, you know, fine. But it's, it's funny because even he, he used to contact me about his relationships and everything else, and I'm like, Dude, this is, this is just not okay. And at one point I had to tell him, I'm like, this is not okay. And it was, it was interesting. It was such an interesting moment because the stronger I got, the more I started to put myself first. But going back to those moments, those dark moments, I couldn't, I couldn't take it one day at a time because that one day was too long. And... When you're losing, when you've lost someone or something or someone you care about, whether it's through a death, through a breakup, through anything, when you lose someone, you, you, you try, people say to you day by day, you can't, it's moment by moment. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you may have a moment where it will go, right, okay, you're okay for these three minutes or four minutes, and then suddenly it's like, you're devastated again, you start crying again. And you're like, I thought I was doing so good, I thought I was doing so good, and then you change it again. And it's just moment by moment. So every time you take that step and something else is just crucifies you, you stop. And the one thing that you have to do is breathe. Because the only thing, actually, the only thing that you have is your breath. Because your breath keeps you alive. Now, some people are not happy being alive, and I understand that. But reality is, is you have to come back to your breath. And all you can do is breathe. Because that breath is that space of breathing. One breath at a time. Correct, Brininja. One breath at a time. One moment at a time. One tiny step at a time. And through that survival space, in that support, survival place that you're at because you are absolutely in that survival space right now you're in that fight or flight you have to just breathe and you have to calm down and you have to just have that moment and just go I'm okay and you have to realize that you're human there's a lot of people who think that you're superhuman there's a lot of people that think, oh, they're okay. Now, I'll tell you something. In that place, honestly, in that place where you are there and everybody is around you and everybody wants to help you and everyone's so sad that this is happening, that's great. But then suddenly, 
a week goes by, two weeks go by, and they go. Because you're not in the forefront and everybody else, you know, something else has taken off. And as my dad would say, it's yesterday's news. And I understand that. But we still have those moments where it crucifies us, it brings us to our knees. And we don't know how to, how to deal with it. Because we think that we're okay. Oh my God, hi Summer. Um, we think that we're okay. And we think that we are fine. And we have these moments where suddenly we're crippled on the floor again. And we're like, oh my God, I haven't got my support network. And I'm gonna give you some advice. As someone who deals with grief on every single day, and as who has had to deal with a lot of people's pain and a lot of people's um, heartache and a, my own heartache, all I can do is you have to take it your, your way. You have to do what is right for you. You can't force yourself. It's like giving birth. Let me explain, it's like giving birth. Oh my God, because the doctor can say to you push but if your body doesn't want to push and that kid doesn't want to come out it ain't gonna come out you have to realize that you've got to do it in your own time your body is going to start to react your emotions will react everything reacts in the way that it's meant to react and you will have this moment where you'll just go Oh my God, and you'll hyperventilate and then you'll be okay and then you'll be laughing and you're thinking, why am I laughing? Oh my God, I shouldn't be laughing because this person's died or, or this has happened. And then you feel guilty and then you have all of these emotions that guilt comes in and you're like, oh my God, I should be grieving. You have to stop. You have to stop. Because in that place of grief, you also have to take care of you. Because there's nothing you can do about someone else. The only person that you can deal with is you and your own emotions. Your own emotions are the only things that you can control. And in this place, it is, it is so important to breathe and to always say, I'm okay. I'm okay. And feel your body. Sometimes it's about feeling your body. And I tell you now, in that deepest pain, it's about feeling your legs, feeling your head, feeling your face, feeling everything about you, knowing that you are okay. And then day by day, moment by moment, step by step, somehow the world looks a little bit brighter. Somehow the world looks a little bit more alive. Somehow something's going to make you laugh again. And that guy that used to phone me up and FaceTime me first thing in the morning on his way to work used to piss me off. Oh my God. He used to drive me insane because he's like, are you still crying? I'm like, yeah, asshole, I'm still crying because that's what it was. And slowly he made me laugh. You know, he made me laugh. And he made me laugh and I was like, you know what? You're funny. You're actually quite funny. And then something happened and I started to realize that I'm worth it. That I am worth living and that I am worth being in this place and, and worth being happy. And when he invited me to go to DC to see him, I was like, sure, I'll go. Yeah, whatever. And quite honestly, I don't want to be crude, but I was only just going to go for one thing and it was just going to get it at my system and, and it was all a bit of a revenge and I was like, whatever, I'm going. And I remember going and thinking, not getting emotionally involved, don't want to get emotionally involved and this was it. And, but I was already emotionally involved. I was already in that place because he'd helped me through my grief and in a way I'd helped him through his certain things. And then that spark hit and he put a smile on my face and he made me laugh again. And he made me realize that life was for living. And slowly but surely and very slowly, that man changed my life. And here I am almost three years 
almost three years. And ironically, we met on Valentine's Day three years ago. So funny. Um, but I've no, I will know him three years um, next year in February. But here I am, having just spoken to him and telling him how much I love him. And then him sending me a text going, I love you and I love you that much that I'm throwing away the shoes that you hate, which is so funny because they were the shoes that he wore on our first date. And they're ugly. Oh my God, it's ugly. But here we are through unfortunate situations, very, very unfortunate situations that we now have a blended family, Charlie and his daughter, who, you know, sadly, mum passed away and I now have um, legal guardianship of her. And it's through unfortunate situations. But through those unfortunate situations, we've found happiness. And I look at my daughter and, um, you know, I'm so proud of her because she lost her mum. And I remember meeting her before her mum died. She was just this sweet, innocent child. Sweet, innocent child. Who had so much to look forward to. Big Justin Bieber fan. We took us to see Justin Bieber. Screamed because she was in the same room as Justin Bieber. Breathed in the same air. And I fell in love with this girl. And little did I know or realize a year later she would be in my care. And when her mum died, I grieved for the loss of her mum. I grieved for the loss of her, for what she was going through, and for my boyfriend. Because despite the fact that they had been parted, he still loved her. They'd been together. They had a child together and everything else. And it was very raw. It was very raw in our household for some time and Charlie grieved for his his sanity I'm sure and he grieved for his independence and he grieved for the bathroom that he now lost and has to share with a 14 year old girl of that thing but the interesting thing was I've watched her go through her grief and I've watched her feeling like she should be strong for her mom and feeling like she should do certain things until I sat her down and said, honey, you shouldn't be doing things because things are meant to be. Or th th things, are, things are, you know, things are what you think they should be. Things are there because you're feeling them. I said, feel them. And slowly and surely, she misses her mum, obviously, and she does. And when her mum died, I channeled a piece of information for her and I, I created her room. I spent probably two or three weeks thinking, what am I gonna do with her room? But I got this photograph and I, I, I helped with as much as I could with the funeral at a distance. Um, and what I ended up doing was creating this photograph with a little message from her mom and framing it and putting it in her room. And when I picked her up, she was very distant. You know, grief hits you in so many ways. And she was very distant and she, you know, we spent six hours in the car together because we drove home together while Chris took the dog in, the, in his, the other car and I had to drive all the car, we had to drive all the cars back to mine. And the interesting thing was, is I asked her to tell me about her mom. And suddenly her face lit up. And this is another thing about grief. Anyone who's going through grief, don't ignore it. Talk to them about it. Because I spoke to her and I said, I want to hear about your happy memories. I want to hear about the fun times. I want to hear about what made you laugh. I want to hear about what made you cry. I want to hear what really annoyed you about her. And I want to hear what you, you loved about her. And we must have spent a good four hours of that car ride talking about her mum. And it was amazing because I learned so much about her mum. 
I so, learned so much about her. And I'm never going to be her mom. I'm never going to take that place. But I now know her mom. Because I never, me and her mom never met. But I know her through my daughter now. And it helped her. And now, even now, you know, if I, if she pisses me off and I'll tell her off and she'll go into a room and she'll sit there with a mum's picture and she'll talk to her mum. But it's beautiful because she talks. And this is important. She She's created her own relationship with her mum. Even though that loved one is gone, that is important that you create your relationship with the loved one. Even though they're not there, create it. Get a picture, talk to the picture, do some writing, write them a letter. It fills you in a way. It's never going to fill the hole, but it fills you in some way. You get to say what you need to say. And of course, you know, she was angry and everything else. But she's been with us now since March. And what is beautiful is I've been away for the last, on and off for the last month and a half. And what was interesting is tonight, just out of the blue, is I get a text message from her that said, good night, Lisa, I love you and I see you tomorrow, I can't wait, with a kiss and a heart. And it might have finally made me realize I was doing something right. I haven't forced her to be my daughter, though I treat her as if she is. I've just given her the space to grieve. I've given her the space to have that place of knowing that it's okay. And when she does laugh and she's got the most beautiful smile, when she does laugh and she does have those moments where she stops in her tracks, I'm like, it's okay to be happy. And she never thought that she could be. And I tell her all the time that it's okay to be happy. It's okay because your mum would want you to be happy. And now, and it's funny because today we were FaceTiming and she said to me, um, I need a best friend. I need a best friend at school. And she's only been at that school for a short period of time. And I said, it will come. And she said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I went, what? She said, but you're like my best friend, but I need a best friend my age. And that was just so incredible when you have that. And it's beautiful to know that you can be there for someone. So I guess in my place with what I'm trying to say here is when grief hits us and when grief hits us into that place of, um, of shock, because it is shock, and as Elizabeth Kalubia Ross says it so perfectly, God rest her soul, we go through five emotions. I'm sure there's more, but there's five emotions. We go through denial. Can't believe this has happened. Can't believe this has happened. And it's like, and Wendy, just Wendy, your story there, you can't believe it's happening. You're probably preparing yourself for your mum's passing. But the thing is, is that, thanks Nikki, um, in, that, in, that space of the, in that space of growth, and watching someone pass, you're going through the grieving then. And you can't believe that it's gonna happen. You're in denial, you're absolutely in denial to a point where you're like, I can't believe this. You get angry, you get so upset, you, you, you get angry with everything. You get into that place of anger and you, hatred, you hate yourself, you hate everything, you you hate the people who are happy, you look at people who are happy and you hate them and you don't even know them. And then you're hitting that place of bargaining and you're like, if only, if only I'd have done this, what if, what if, could I have done this? And you're going to fluctuate between all of these, 
all of these emotions because it's not just going to come at, in this order. It's you're going to be back and forth. And then you hit that place of depression where you're like, I can't get out of bed. Screw the world. I actually want to be where they are. What's the point? What is the point? And you get into this place where you just can't focus. You can't even function. And you hit all of these things, like you bargain, you go through denial again, you get angry again, and then you get depressed again, and it's up and down. And then suddenly you hit that acceptance. And you accept that that person's gone, and you accept that that change has happened, and you accept that that is there. It doesn't mean that you don't miss them. It doesn't mean that you are, can't you know, deal with their, their passing or you can't deal with their loss or something. What it means is you've just accept it. You've accepted that this is where you're at, okay? And you've just accepted that, hey, you know what? I can't, I can't do anything else. But what then we have to do is in that space of acceptance, we have to love. We have to remember with happy memories, whether they're happy memories or not, you have to love with happy memories. And you have to love yourself. And it goes back to putting yourself first. You have to realize that when you can put yourself first and you can move through this in that place of acceptance, all of those emotions are gonna keep coming up. They will, naturally. But when you put yourself first and you realize I'm okay. I'm going to be okay. And you've worked through your darkest times and those darkest times have been grey and now suddenly it's like light grey and now it's like, oh my God, there's light at the end of the tunnel. It is amazing. And then you can just move through it. And you can find happiness through that acceptance you can find happiness in some way. You're never going to change it. You're never going to change the past. We have to now look ahead. We can't, we can't, thanks Linda, we can't, we can't expect it to be a certain way. Because in reality, what we have is our present we have to be present. We have to surrender into that place, into that moment. Hi, Lisa. We have to surrender into that moment and realize that this is who we are. This is what's going on with us right this moment. And it's okay. So, sometimes we do feel guilty because we've lost someone. And we've lost someone or you're doing something. And so for instance, you know, you love again after losing a husband or a wife or a boyfriend or a girlfriend. You have a child again after a child has died. Something. But let me just, trust me, it's so powerful when you're in that place that they are going, you're going to be okay and it's okay to be happy again. It's okay to have that moments of laughter. It's okay to realize that you're honoring that person or honoring that relationship or honoring that space, honoring that marriage, whatever it is, you're honoring that place in your own authentic way. And remember everything with happy memories because trust me, if you don't remember everything with happy memories, you are going to, you're going to have these things haunt you. You're going to carry it with you and you have to release it. You've got these memories locked in your mind, locked in your heart, locked on your cellular level. But now it's time to create new memories. Now it's time to create a new life, a new normal. I hate that word, but it is, it's a new normal. And when you have that new normal, yes, it's so different from your life I mean, my daughter, seriously, her life is so different now. 
I mean, she actually has to do things rather than watch TV now. But it's like everything is so different. And you, you can't have any guilt. You can't have that space of thinking, what if? You now have to just look ahead. And looking ahead, there's light at the end of the tunnel. You have to honour yourself and you have to be proud of yourself of where you've gone. If you look back at what you were like and you look now to where you are, you have to absolutely honour yourself and realise how proud you should be of yourself because you have gone through so much. You have survived through so much you are a survivor and in that survival space you are here you're breathing you come back to that breath and in that place you're just breathing that I did it I did it and in that place here you are and it's okay to love again and it's okay to enjoy life again and it's okay to laugh again. And it's okay to love again. And these lessons that come through you are powerful. Because these are lessons that you are then going to, guess what? Someone else is going to go through it and you're going to teach them the lesson. You're going to share your story and they're going to go, wow, thank you. Just as I'm sharing my story and it's probably what you needed to hear, this is exactly what other people need to hear from you. You may share their, your story and all of a sudden you've just healed them. It's the power of healing and it's the power of words and it's the power of togetherness and love. Because all you're going to do is speak from the heart and speak from your love and speak from what you have. And reality is, is that's all you've got. And you're then going to go and heal someone else. So through your emotions and through your pain and through your suffering that you have now come out the other end. Guess what? You're now going to be able to love again. And you're now going to be able to share in that love and you're now going to be able to help someone else that's what it's about and that's why we go through these lessons and trust me it sucks it sucks and it's horrible but it's amazing it's absolutely amazing so as I said today marks an anniversary for me of grief but out of that grief through that grief and my boyfriend will often say that he wants this person to be at our wedding because you know if it wasn't for him he wouldn't have met me which is true but the interesting thing is is that it's through my grief that I found happiness and that's what you have to remember. Anyway, I am going to go. Um, I'm going to love and leave you all. Thank you for listening. And uh, remember that love yourself. Put yourself first in anything that you do. And honour the space that you've been in. And the space that you've come from. And the space of where you're at now. That was my little insight for the night. And I'm off to go and pack to get ready to go home to the kids and to my man and do whatever I need to do. Thank you for listening. Thank you for the hearts. Oh my God, I love it. Lisa, big hugs to you all. Thank you, everyone. And thank you for sharing your story while I've been talking. You know, I'll go back and read them all. But thank you for... Hi, Pauline. But thank you for sharing your story. Um, because it's through sharing that you find the help and the healing. All right. Love you guys and um, I'll be back soon. All right.
And, and we're not married yet, Nikki, so don't worry. <laughs> we're not married. <laughs> That's a whole other thing, but there you go. All right. Mwah. Love you all. Bye.